All right. Um, so for today's video blog, I'll be um, addressing this request from Angie Mercado at the University of Córdoba, uh, de la clase Fundamento de Investigación. Um, I've been doing these video blogs, and um, there, I was, uh, what should I talk about today? And we got this topic, so it's a win-win. topical. All right. Um, <coughs> So I'll be going over a set of seven questions that I, that I got, and um, I learned different languages at different places. So um, just you know, whatever comes to mind as, as we go over this, All right? All right. Um, uh, when I was eight, our family moved from a concept, uh, from Busan in Korea. And we made a flight to Los Angeles. I think we did lay over there. And from there we flew to Temuco. No, no, to Concepcion. So I remember, uh, because my parents are missionaries. So I remember uh, in the, either in the airport or in the house before we, a few days before, we were like, oh yeah, we're going to this very far place called Chile. You need to sleep. You need to sleep like, three nights in the airplane <laughs> to get there so it's very far and there they speak a completely different language they speak like Spanish so um, uh, so you know maybe you can learn beforehand so I was um, trying to learn I remember I think I learned to count up to five I was like oh one, two, three. all right um, so it was kind of fun and cool before going there once you do get there, uh, it is more stressful because everyone else speaks fine and you're kind of the only Asian in the entire city, pretty much. Um, and uh, on, on, on top of that, you don't speak the language. So I think it was, it was kind of stressful. Um, uh, but unfortunately, I think, I think when you're young, you learn very quickly. So yeah, that was good. Um, uh, I think with the exception of Hanja and German, all the other languages I learned, I had to learn. So I don't know if I was hoping for anything. So like in Korea, you have to learn Korean and then you go to Chile and you have to learn Spanish and you have to learn English and you have to learn French from eighth grade till Segundo medio, and um, I don't know, but I remember um, I was I was finding this learning language thing pretty fun, and uh, I remember when I was in like third or eleventh grade, I made this um, list of like life goals <laughs> when I was in second grade in high school, or I mean when I was in eleventh grade, I made this list of life goals, or maybe tenth uh, grade. Um, and uh, there were like 30 items and I think almost all 30 were high school subjects like asignaturas of, of, from high school and um, uh, it was all things like I'm going to learn chemistry up to this level <laughs> and physics to this and history and um, among this long list of things that I wanted to learn um, there are languages included so I believe that included all the languages I was learning at the time. So I think it was like English, French, German, and I was trying to learn Hanja because I noticed that when I was reading Korean newspapers, I couldn't read or the more conservative magazines, they were still using Hanja uh, mixed in with the Korean. So if you didn't know Hanja, you couldn't get the, get, the, get the gist of it. So especially for Hanja, I think my hope was to read these more advanced books that I, I really wanted to read because they I had pretty much like devoured all the all the easier books at home. So I was trying to read things like Wei Lan Joseon. It's a monthly monthly magazine about politics and current news. Uh, I was trying to read the newspaper, things like that. Um, uh, German. I don't think I had any hopes when trying to learn German. I, I guess it was just. It was just kind of a fun challenge because it was so different from the other languages uh, that I was learning. Um, so how did my expectations impact my learning? Uh, um, so 
uh, I think it's common knowledge that in order to be because uh, in high school well I was equally interested in the humanities uh, slash social sciences and the natural sciences so um, but I was keenly aware that if I ever went to do humanities in Korea like if I wanted to study like philosophy or history in Korea uh, my choice of books would be limited to pure Korean books unless I learned Hanja beforehand because yeah and I think the common accepted uh, array of Hanja so Chinese Hanja words I need to learn beforehand is about a thousand words so I think that's my initial goal um, and a thousand words is what you learn if you go to high school in, in Korea what you're supposed to learn, I don't know if everyone does learn <coughs> at least back in the 90s I, I think these days the relevance of Hancha is diminishing um, so I think I was in a little bit of a um, rush I guess um, to learn the language so um, Hancha was a very uh, unique uh, learning Hanja was a very unique experience uh, because I wasn't learning grammar, I wasn't learning anything, I was only learning words and how to write them and how to read them. Yeah, words, write, le learn. So I remember I was filling up the notebook uh, and wrote, I don't remember how many, I wrote the same letter in Hanja uh, like 30 times. So. I did what I always did for my high school tests when I had to learn something that was like uh, memorization intensive, like biology. What I did was, let's say you need to learn, uh, you need to learn like 20, 20 things. So what I do is I learn the first three. That's easy. First three, and you go bam 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 bam. Photosynthesis, mitochondria, si. Photosynthesis, mitochondria, si. What can be as um, uh, and something else and um, you're like okay I learned these three alright next you learn three more um, and then you try to to go over all six photosynthesis, mitochondria, uh, material genetico and so forth and so forth um, so you're like oh, okay so my, my, and then and then my brain is like okay I, I got all six and then I have three more so then I and so forth. So that's what I did with the hancha. So I start out with like I don't know five five letters, and I wrote wrote them. I wrote like thirty times each letter, after. like hanul chan, hanul chan, hanul chan, hanul chan, hanul chan. Um, next day I add, or was it next week? I don't remember. But the next time, next cycle, uh, I would do that every day in the morning. So in the next cycle, I was um, adding five more and adding five more. And I think I was going a little bit too fast and um, burned out. At some at some point after learning about two hundred words, um, so yeah, uh, yeah. So I was in in Chile learning Hancha. I guess I once uh, uh, I have an um, I have several relatives in Southern California, and um, my parents felt I had to learn. I had a pretty interesting. Um, series of events that led one to each other um, that led to my current proficiency in English uh, especially the written proficiency I think and um, so my parents felt they need to I think uh, double down on it by uh, um, getting me to a like, college level English so they were like oh uh, why don't you take the TOEFL test because you know you have you're playing with computers uh, primary, primary language and all this has been building up to you know, getting your English. I don't remember. I, I don't think they had to convince me. I was like, okay, sure, I'll do it. So um, I went to, I uh, came to Southern California and stayed at my uncle's for six weeks um, and enrolled at this uh, TOEFL Haban. And um, uh, yeah, I took the first test and it was kind of like medium, high ish. And um, uh, I started going to the class on class every day I think and um, I, I, I realized that my reading was 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 very good because I was reading books in English by that time um, uh, reading was fine writing was pretty bumpy 
and then listening and speaking were all like ah, it was, it was terrible so um, that's where my, my scores were failing so um, I don't think anyone told me to do this but um, I felt well the thing is I'm not very social so I don't like to go out and talk to people so because I wasn't doing any of that I wasn't getting a whole lot of practice out of Sehawon and talking to my relatives um, who the younger ones spoke English and the older ones spoke Korean so um, what I did is uh, this was 2000 so um, I would spend the evening yeah like the late evening afternoon uh, doing this like have one homework like grammars and stuff and while I was doing it I kept the TV on and uh, fortunately for me there are a lot of uh, uh, 2000 was when the presidential election was going on in the US so they're all I think I, I put the CNN's uh, crossfire which runs during the daytime so I'm not sure what I ran during the evening but what I was trying to do was just um, um, uh, overwhelm uh, overwhelm my input with the language so that because I have this theory that if you j just give your brain a lot of information eventually the brain will start to make sense out of it and find patterns so I was trying to apply that and um, and uh, I don't know if it worked but that's what I was trying to do to improve my listening my listening skills um, uh, it was fine living there was not too stressful it was pretty regular and uh, uh, rather monotonous going to church on Sundays and then going to Hagon during the weekdays how many hours was it 10 hours a week 20 hours a week and then doing homework trying to read novels in the meantime and all the while while having the TV on with people talking in English um, so I wasn't quite leaving there I went there just a short term to study uh, so yeah and then afterwards um, after graduating high school, I applied to colleges in, in the U.S. and uh, well, I, I applied while I was in college, high school, and then uh, I went to. Ta da! Also, oh, I was in Temuco when I was in high school. I ended up in Minnesota. Yay! Let's look at the campus. Yay! Yeah, this is the stadium. I never went there because I had no interest in whatever. Uh, physics. Oh, looks so nice. Okay, so this is my first year. I stayed at um, I think the Turk uh, one, and uh, the classes, humanities classes were happening here, the old main, and social science were happening at what's this place called? Is this no? This is not. This is the warehouse, sir. What the heck is this? Whatever, whatever the social science building was. So that's where we had anthro. Oh, and then chemistry was happening here. Yeah. So, so I applied to this college and uh, got accepted and went in. So, um, let's see, do I get to this question later on? Yeah, I guess I don't get the question later on. So, um, that was a very different experience because I wasn't there learning a language, I was just uh learning whatever my major was which in the beginning was philosophy and chemistry so i had this very strange experience that um for both philosophy and chemistry i was fairly uh I was somewhat exposed to the uh, subject matter so um especially like the more advanced words um I, I, we had this running joke in high school that after we um became somewhat proficient in English, or we, after we had our first dose, third dose of uh, instructions in English, we were joking around that everything in English is the Spanish word, the root, plus Asian. Like, like, uh, what, what, what can be Asian? Like, uh, computador? Com, com, no. <laughs> anyway, so we had that running joke, and um, uh, <coughs> so that did apply to higher level humanities and social science terms like uh, I can't think of any right now um, utilitarianism uh, like I don't know anyway so um, <coughs> so I had this funny experience that the class itself was it was I didn't have a language barrier in the class itself debating 
like what debating what Plato said, describing Kant's Kant's uh, uh, system and so forth. That was not the hard part. The hard part was when the class was over. So the uh, the, the the professor was like, "Oh, okay, it's it's over." All right, everyone, we're gonna have a pop quiz, and we're gonna change the date of the pop quiz for next week. And that's the part that I couldn't get uh, understand because it was like informal language, and like pop quiz, I have no idea what what the hell that is. Um, uh, and yeah, all these informal words were were hard. I remember when taking the SAT that like the later parts in the verbal section were, were easy, and the earlier parts were hard. Like, what is a morsel of bread? Morsel? I never heard that before, and it doesn't appear in the novels I read. So all those things were yeah hard. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, did I didn't come to the US with my fa family, so I don't know if it impacted my family. When I was in Chile, I guess, yeah, I guess my parents had some, ex um, especially with my younger brother, they had some, uh, some communications barriers, especially like for the basic stuff is fine, but if you want to get into some more advanced uh you want to explain what i want to do in life because of blah 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 because these are my values or whatever i, th I imagine i wasn't there when that when that if that discussion happened if when that happened but i imagine that that's when it was uh, hard i think um for them to catch what's happening uh to, to convey all that um is that the original question do I believe it? No, it's here. Do you feel you can relate to other people when talking in another language? No, no, that's what I wrote. In what ways? No. How do you feel relating to people in English? I, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, yes, I mean, if, if you're by this, you mean, can I convey and perceive emotions while talking to people? Yeah, it's, I think... Uh, Failure to go to catch emotions is happens at a very basic level. So I think for German, probably I would have had a harder time, um, uh, yeah, uh, relating <coughs> to other people when talking in that language. Although you know you can, um, as as our our dear leader uh, Jeremy at Motivate Korean has said, uh, language. We, we have this tendency to isolate language in its purely um, verbal aspect, whereas there are many other, uh, like when you speak your own language, your, your, own, your own native language, there are many um, channels through which you convey uh, uh, a variety of information. So uh, when people talk to each other, they look at each other, they sometimes roll their eyes, so they look down if they're feeling un uneasy, uh, they use gestures and use their face, happy, sad, you know, angry, and so forth. So, um, so all that is part of your communications uh, channels and the verbal aspect happens to be the biggest portion of it, but it does not, it should not mean that um, when, it should not mean that um, when you are learning another language, you should suppress all your other community channels because you are purposefully handicapping yourself by doing that. So um, I, I think especially Koreans feel very embarrassed about using gestures or expression because that can, that for some reason has become a symbol for I don't speak English well, so I need to rely on these muletillas. And um, uh, you know, I think, uh, just use whatever you can. Uh, uh, just do it like like the <laughs> like our Mexican brothers do it in, here in LA, which is just talking to you in, in, in Spanish and hoping that you understand. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shared uh, vocabulary between Spanish and English, so that's gonna work to some extent. So um, I, I think yeah, I think people should not refrain from using all the channels. And if you do use all the channels, I think you should have no trouble. Uh, communicating feelings 
you know if you're if you're like this you're angry if you're like this you're happy you know it's it, not a rocket science <coughs> how do you feel about learning another language in your country uh, that's kind of cool I remember um, I remember in school, everyone wanted to learn Korean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's good. Um, so again, I'm gonna quote our dear dear leader uh, Jeremy of uh, Motive Korean, and say that um, it's learning another language. It's a little bit like left. It's a bit like being left-handed. So in a world that is made where very small things are made for right-handed people and every day 24 7 um, left-handed people are forced to take that extra mile to do whatever they are supposed to do that um, that right-handed people don't have to do i think um, <coughs> uh, language it, uh, as you get used to a language it's a little bit of a comfort zone and uh, um, you get used to thinking in patterns and taking shortcuts um, and, and that's where the famous uh, Facebook uh, meme of like they post something that where they where the um, letters are, are jumbled up and you can still read them because your mind is already over trained for that language that that for which you're a native language so um, uh, you should learn an Arab language if if anything just to train your brain um, because learning other languages fr frees your mind uh, it 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 gives you it helps you look at things from a different perspective um, look at very look at things at a very very basic level um, such as what is the relationship between that is a relationship between the external world and me such as what is causality what causes things such as uh, uh, what, what, what was that? There's this old, age-old debate about um, uh, is a thing's characteristics or essence the nature of that thing or something like that. There's some debate about that. So I think for all these things, I think language will help you get new perspectives challenge your mind and ultimately free your mind of uh, uh, of the shackles of um, habit so uh, right uh, so that's about it um, if you have any follow-up questions feel free to uh, uh, contact me any of the any of the different ways in which you can contact um, I had fun uh, talking about this. I, I'm hoping to talk a little more about my experience learning uh, Korean, learning uh, Spanish, and learning English and other languages because um, I, I found uh, a lot of people found it uh, found my experience a little bit unusual. But I thought it was a rather like a lucky sequence of events that led to the happening. So um, I, I wanted to explain a bit and and see what people think. So. Uh, thank you for watching.